So let's look at what a network on chip might look like. Let's say we have some sort of a squarish tile that has a core and maybe a level one cache. And such tiles normally will be connected to a shared bus. Now let's say that these four cores are using half of the available throughput on the bus because their cache misses and coherence need to be taken care of through the bus. Now let's say we add another set of those cores, pretty much the same thing, just replicated. Now we have an even longer, thus possibly a slower bus that all traffic from all these eight cores goes to. So we got a slower bus, probably with less throughput than the original small one had, yet it has twice the demand for traffic. So very quickly, it will get saturated. Now let's consider a type of on-chip network that is called a mesh. So here what we have is these core tiles are individually connected like this, for example. Now there is no more broadcast, but this core can still send a message to any other core. If we send a message to this, this is the link that gets used. Meanwhile, this core could be sending a message here. If we need to send a message from here to here, then these two links get used. Meanwhile, we can get these two links used independently. So as you can see, the total available throughput in the entire network is several times the throughput of this individual link. And because it's a short link, we can have a very large throughput. Now I'm going to take this 2x2 two two mesh and copy it so that I get four of those and create a 4x4 four four mesh that now supports 16 cores, twice as many as here. Note how many new links are there. Now if we have neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor communication, we can have these two talking, these two talking, these two talking, all over independent links. So as I increase the number of cores, I also increase the number of these links naturally, so that the total throughput available in this network grows with the number of cores. So the number of cores grows, the number of links grows, and that allows the available throughput to grow, and that means that I can have many more cores than I could on the bus. There are many types of these so-called point-to-point networks. A mesh is one of those that is very good for chip building because none of these links intersect each other. So because chips are basically made by printing things on silicon, it's naturally good to have something that is kind of flat like this and doesn't have links going across different nodes. But we can build chips with some amount of links crossing each other, and thus we can have a mesh, which is kind of like what we have seen. We can have a torus network. You build a torus by taking the mesh and connecting the end points to each other. So the torus really takes the link and kind of wraps it around and then wraps it around and so on. And then you do that in the other dimension too. You can think of these processors as basically things on a donut. You would take this, wrap it around, you get a cylinder, then you take the endpoints of the cylinder, bend it and create a donut, so that's why it's called a torus. But in reality, what you really do is you do this. Have a long link that crosses here, and a long link that crosses here, and so on. And then you also take this and create a long link that goes here, so that's how you create a torus. And then there are even fancier networks that are still reasonably good for on-chip implementation, such as flattened butterfly. If you're interested in how these work, a very good place to start would be an advanced class on on-chip interconnects.